Hey guys, welcome to Drinking with Dave, where normally I would sample a different drink every episode and then pair it with classical music, but we're gonna do something a little bit different today. We're making a cocktail. And one of the things I like about cocktails is it leaves a little room for interpretation or improv. So today we'll be pairing this with jazz. It's time to make an old fashioned. Now normally there's no how-to element to these videos. I'm just pouring a dram of something and drinking it neat. And in the process, I might talk about the history or the specs. Uh, since we're making a cocktail though, rather than jumping into the history, I thought we'd just dive straight into how to make an old fashioned. So the first thing you're gonna want is your base, which is going to be a bourbon or a rye. Uh, today we're using the Knob Creek Seven Year, which is a rye. And I like Knob Creek because it's flexible. Uh, you know, some whiskeys uh, make good mixers, but they don't really stand out on their own as a good sipper. Uh, other whiskeys are great on their own, but you would never want to throw them into a cocktail or mix them with something. Knob Creek is either or. You know, you can drink it neat and it stands well enough by itself. Uh, you can also use it in a cocktail and I think it's a good mixer. Now, some hardline traditionalists will say that you need to make an old fashioned with a rye. Uh, I'm not one of these. Uh, I will frequently make old fashions with a Knob Creek nine year, which is actually a bourbon. And more often than not, if you go to a restaurant or a bar and you order an old fashioned, you'll just as frequently get bourbon. And I think that's perfectly fine. Really, I say if you want it a little sweeter, use bourbon. If you want it a little spicier, use rye. So that's gonna be your base, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour two ounces of that. Now to add the sweetness, there are two ways you can go. One is to use a sugar cube and muddle it down, uh, and the other is to use simple syrup, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of sugar cubes because it gives the drink a granular texture. Uh, some people like that, some people don't, so it's really up to your personal preference. Uh, and for the simple syrup, I would say no more than a quarter ounce, otherwise, you know, you're gonna be getting into the territory of too sweet, which, you know, if you like that, it's fine. If you're serving others, you know, they may, may or may not like that. Uh, and then if you wanted even less sweet, I would say you could probably go down to an eighth an ounce as well. So uh, at that point, you're gonna want to add the Agnostura bitters, uh, two to four dashes, and I'll actually buy two bitters and I'll use them both. And what I'll do is I will use two dashes of the regular uh, Agnostura bitters, and then I will use two dashes of the orange bitters. And the latter is really important to me because it's really the only way I'm gonna get that characteristic orange flavor most of the time because it's rare that I have oranges here at the house, uh, although sometimes I do. Uh, at this point, you've got your bitters, you've got your simple syrup or your sugar cube, uh, you've got your base. Some people will add a splash of water at this point. Uh, really comes down to preference, although I think that's probably even more relevant if you're using actual sugar. But at this point, you're gonna want to go ahead and stir the drink, and you're gonna wanna stir it for at least 30 seconds. Uh, it may seem like you're stirring for a long time, but uh, you wanna make sure it's really mixed in there nicely. And then once you've stirred it, uh, you're ready to add ice and garnishes. So I will use a square cube for this, uh, and you can find square ice cube trays online pretty cheap. And for garnishes, if I have oranges at the house, uh, I can use an orange rind here. And nowadays, it's common to use uh, cherries, uh, even though that's more traditional with a Manhattan. But uh, I like the cherry touch, and so I usually keep cocktail cherries here at the house. Uh, and I do recommend the cocktail cherries over the Marchino cherries. So at this point, I'm ready to make the drink and give it a taste. So once it's mixed, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, now I'm gonna skip the nose on this one since it's a cocktail, uh, just smells like an old fashioned, nothing uh, really to say about that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and have a taste. Mm. It's delicious. It's not too sweet, not too bitter, well balanced. The seven year is a little spicier and more grain forward than the nine. Also a little drier, but still really good. 
With that said, I do think I prefer the Knob Creek nine year bourbon uh, because this one is just missing those characteristic brown sugar notes that you get on the nine. And I really like that in old fashioned. Uh, but with that said, this is still a good mix, a great drink. So if I'm pairing this with music, I am going with jean Eric by Miles Davis. And as always, I'll leave a link down in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, this piece is pretty unique in that it was entirely improv. Uh, Miles actually recorded this for a 1957 French film by Louis Mal called Ascenseur pour la Chiffade, which translated means elevator to the gallows. And he basically improv the entire score to the film. Uh, what they did is they brought Miles into this recording studio with this jazz combo. And the studio had a large theater screen. So Miles could actually play in real time and respond to the images that he was seeing up there on the screen, which is a pretty remarkable way to create a score. Uh, now this particular tune comes at a moment in the film where it's nighttime and a distraught Jean Moreau has just been stood up by her lover and wanders aimlessly into the streets of Paris. There's action and city lights all around her, but she might as well be in the desert. And the music conveys that sense of loneliness. It's haunting, it's melancholy, yet there's a tension there at the same time. Behind that loneliness, there's a hopeful longing for what could still be. And the blend of those things reminds me of the balance between the sweet and bitter elements of the old fashioned. Miles also settles on diminished fifths quite prominently and really lingers on them in a way that's not common. Um, diminished fifth in music, it's, it's a sound that really clashes against the chord. And so normally you'd move by it really quickly. But Miles really prolongs it, you know, but up, we up, up, we up, you know, and in the process of, of dragging that out, it creates tension and intrigue. Whereas the way that he plays around with sixes creates a quieter tension. And to me, that quieter tension, that would be the simple syrup. That would be the sweeter element. Whereas those diminished fifths, those are your bitters inside of the old fashioned. And that juxtaposition of those two things creates something absolutely delightful. So I would say if the old fashioned had its own tune, I think this is that tune. So check the song out in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you like uh, this type of video. I don't usually do cocktail videos, but uh, I'm not adverse to doing more of these uh, if there is a demand for it. Uh, so just let me know what you think. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care.